Wait, do that again. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> the Finley's 10 are uh, 10 egg laying hens, which I bought in November uh, as pullets for hey. young egg layers. And uh, they're just the 10 best birds in the world. I'm Jordan Fowler, and I'm a small scale egg producing chicken farmer. simple. I mean, I just come out here and open up the big barn doors and let the well summers out uh, first thing. And then at about 10.30, I'll uh, put the well summers back in because if I have all the chickens out here at the same time, it can get a little bit rambunctious. Uh, I also have 12 other brown layers. Uh, an additional three white layers that came just this past week, as well as a family of heirloom chickens, uh, which are an older variety, called the Well Summers. And uh, the rooster can be a bit of a cock. For the most part, conventional farms, um, whether it be egg producing farms or meat producing farms, do not give uh, the chickens an allowed time um, to just be chickens. Um, the North American market for meat and eggs uh, is so large now and so rapid that chicken and egg producers can't produce fast enough to meet the demand. To give, to give those chickens the allotted time to spend foraging or scratching around or enjoying life is just not economically feasible. And I think that this is true to say about a lot of our agriculture today. We just do not give the space or time to allow the relationship to exist between farmer and fowl or farmer and land. Um, and this has deeply affected um, how much culture exists in our agriculture. The majority of the eggs that are laid here um, are sold. We sell about six dozen a week as of right now, but because I've just recently um, got more chickens, we'll hopefully bring that up to about 12 dozen uh, eggs sold a week. Time I come back into the barn, usually around eight, and I'll essentially just pop in each of the chicken coops, ensure that nothing crazy's gone down, and then I just turn the lights off and allow for them to have some rest uh, through the night hours. 